Hey riders, here's another one for you. No, it's not a race today. I love doing race coverage. I love being involved in races. I love just sitting and watching races and commentating. Let me know if you like that stuff. I love doing it. Actually, what we're going to do today is going to just bounce back a little bit. I think I found another little hidden gem for you all to ride. So I think it was about six weeks ago, maybe seven or eight, scouring around on, you know, maps, searching for rides to do on Ruby. It's actually a way you can do that with the map feature. I think someone's requested that video at some point, and I've been meaning to make it. I'll put it on top priority. So you can use the map to kind of like zoom around and take a look and see where the rides are without actually searching for the names. You'll discover them as you're looking, which is part of the fun. So I did this ride, not this one, the old La Honda, which is a ride I found six, seven, eight weeks ago. It's just south of San Francisco. Um, and, you know, that little part of the world there, there's a big national, I don't know if it's a national park, but there's a big park area, forested, you know, they call them mountains there, big hills, that type of thing. But it's world-class climbing paradise for cyclists. There's so many little hills there, you know, going up through these little neighborhoods. Uh, you know, it's a place where you see a lot of the big names trying to go for Strava segments. In fact, on this road itself that you're on right now watching, the uh, Strava segment is held by Phil Guyman, another very uh, popular YouTuber. Uh, check his channel out. He does a lot of cool things on there. Uh, so what I did today here on this one is I set myself with some virtual partners because I'm riding this alone and you'll notice that it's a non AR route. So there's no augmented reality on this one. This is just a video route. And so if you look on the side of the left of the screen, you can see the names there. I picked Scooper, BLRS Smith, Homestead, Justin Miller, and Bering Beitzel. These are just some names I saw, like, you know, top of the leaderboard for route passes. I just clicked them on. So it gives me something to keep me honest, right? So with it being non-AR, you're not going to see any of the augmented reality assets. You're not going to see, like, the banners or the finish lines and things like that. You also won't see avatars of cyclists. So this is a non-AR ride, again. But what you'll notice right away is... You still get to see where riders are within proximity to you. That's on the left-hand side on the leaderboard there, where it says nearby you. You can also tell where they are on the bottom of the profile. So you can see everyone behind me here. So how this kind of played out when I started, you've got two kilometers of fly here. Actually, let me jump back to this first. Let's get some stats and details on this climb, right? Uh, Kings Mountain Road, nine kilometers long, 5.6 miles, 501 meters of climbing. 1,644 feet. Yeah, it's got some bite to it. Uh, what makes it even tougher is that the first two kilometers, which is 1.2 miles, is flat. So it kind of shortens up the climb even more, right? And you're going to jam the elevation into the back end. So we're in the climb here. So what happened was I just kind of went out on my own pace. I wasn't pushing hard. I wasn't feeling chased by anyone. And I managed to pull out, you know, upwards of 200 meters until we got to the climb. Uh, there's a rider on here called Homestead on the screen right now on the left. They are the Ruby route record holder. Uh, they've done the ride a ton of times named Homestead. The ride that they're doing today here, I didn't pick their fastest time only because Homestead rode at 3.8 watts per kilo. And that's a little bit above me right now. So... You know, I wanted to make a video, I had a chance of competing with someone, but I picked riders that were very close to me, right around three watts per kilo. I think I might've went down to as low as 2.6 watts per kilo, just to show you that 2.63 on these climbs, there's not going to be a ton of difference. You're not going to be like, you know, I'm not going to be finishing and you're only going to be halfway. You're going to be really close actually. So um, on Ruby, there's two versions of Kings Mountain Road. And when I say two, I mean two video routes. The ones that I found. The rest are like map mode routes that might be some bigger loops and take more climbs in. They might be really cool to do if you're into that kind of stuff. There's a shorter one that I think is the official Strava, Strava segment uh, route. It's a bit shorter, but it was filmed on a bike. A lot of swaying back and forward. 
um, not very good camera stabilization. And I just thought it would make a terrible video. So I did the slightly long, longer one that starts in Woodside, California. I imagine that's just a little tiny town outside of San Francisco. Maybe it's a neighborhood. I'm not sure. So it's slightly longer. Uh, but it, it actually also seems like a better starting point. Like you're in a town. Let's leave town and go up the hill. Go up the mountain, right? Uh, looks like it's filmed from a car. Super stable. Very smooth. Remember, the video is running at two times speed as well. So obviously I would never climb this fast, but it's not crazy fast. Now, the reason why I called this a hidden gem, and this totally qualifies as hidden gem. This is world-class cycling area outside of San Francisco. Like the more I look at the maps and stuff, yeah, you could be a killer hill climber living around here. Um, so last year, sorry, for the year of 2023, I know we still have a couple days to go. As of when I did the video, which was a couple days ago, there had only been 43 passes in the entire year. That's it. Now, I think that means 43 different people. I don't think that counts, you know, if you did the pass a couple times, because Homestead likes to ride this a lot. I'm thinking maybe Homestead lives in the area and likes to maybe train on the video. Um, so you can see here, I'm just going to jump back to the ride. I pulled out a bit of distance here. I've got 300 meters on Scooper. Scooper's chasing me pretty hard though. Um, I found all these cyclists that I picked, my virtual partners, this VPs for short. They never, they didn't start very hard. As soon as I got to the hill, they started going harder. And that's one thing you got to remember about the VPs is their average watts per kilo can be quite deceptive because you don't really know where they went hard and where they didn't. You're just getting an average over the ride. They might have just soft pedaled at one watt per kilo on the on the first two kilometers and then smashed five watts per kilo at the end. And their average watts per kilo is probably going to be close to what I'm going to ride the whole way. So it's good to look at the, um, the details for the rides. You can actually find those uh, in Ruby. You just got to dig into the data a little bit and you can find them and look at their performances and see where they went really hard. It all depends what you're trying to do. If you just went out for a ride, who cares, right? I just picked these people because they were near the top and I wanted someone to chase me up the hill and try to avoid being caught. So anyways, back to the hidden gem status. 43 passes is in all of 2023. I think for the month of December, I did look, someone rode this right after the day I did. It was pretty shocking. But there was times in 2023 where not one person went up in a single month. Check this stat out. Oh, here we go, map view. So here, what I said before, you can see the other riders on the map view, even though this is a non-AR route. So I always like to look at the map view. Again, I wish there was more detail to it and you could do more fun stuff with it. Here's an interesting fact. Since 2020, and I know there's been some stat resets and things like that, and record resets, but total passes of this route that show up as records is less than 100. Uh, I think this is a great climb. And, you know, if you lived in this part of the world, you know, San Francisco, uh, never been there, but done a lot of reading about it, the cycling in the area, the caliber of cyclists there. This is like a, quite a prestigious climb to do. You want to go do Kings Mountain. You know, this is where people like benchmark themselves and, you know, put themselves up to the test. How fast can you get up Kings Mountain? Throw old La Honda in as well. This one's different. This is more of a steady 7 8%. Maybe you get to 9 in worst cases. Old La Honda is a totally different beast. It's kind of very flat and then very steep. Very flat, very steep all the way. It's kind of a shocker, that one, actually. But, you know, the fact that people aren't riding this kind of boggles my mind. This is a pretty... You know, this is a, a climb that everyone should be doing. It's kind of like a bucket list, right, in, in that part of the world. Uh, going back to that again, um, remember, I keep saying this is a non-AR AR route. Be careful on some of the newer non-ARs. You'll get XP. You can see in the top corner, my XP on the top right-hand side, I'm at 127. And then it shows like a little green thing with XP. That's all about leveling up, you know. Um, You'll see riders, you know, starting out level one. There's riders that are getting close to 100 already, and it takes forever. I'm in the 60s. You need so many points to go up to each level. So every time you do a ride, you're going to get these 
XP points. That just gets your level up. Some of the brand new non-AR will not give you gold coins. Okay? Gold coins is what you need to buy bikes with. So just be very careful about that. Now, you'll notice I carefully said it there, some of the new non-AR, because this one does give you gold coins. This is an older non-AR that I think it takes them a while to register how many coins do we give this thing. There must be some kind of algorithm that they use, like time. Uh, there must be a bunch of factors put in that they, they determine the number of coins. So basically, on Ruby, the routes will have gold coins assigned to them. Doesn't matter how you ride it. As long as you finish it, you're going to get your gold coins. If I hammer it out at three watts per kilo, someone else does it at five watts per kilo, you do it at one. We're all getting the same gold coins. Okay. Um, I think it takes a while for them to figure out some of these non-AR routes, how many coins to assign. Obviously, the longer the ride, the tougher the ride, the more gold coins you're going to get. So if you can ride lots of tough, long rides, you're going to get a bunch of coins and you can buy some bikes real quick. Let's jump back to the ride here, see what's going on. I think stuff's going down now. So, you know, I'm riding this. I think I'm riding pretty good. You know, I'm pushing three watts per kilo all the way. But this scooper character is starting to look a little bit ominous to me. Starting to kind of push up behind me. That 300 meter lead I had before is slowly disappearing. Not really sure what's going on here. But let's uh, just keep an eye on Scooper, right? Yeah, so again, XP, green, gold coins. And just to give you an example here, if I don't say it at the end, for this route in particular, you can see right now I'm at... 159 green XP. For this entire climb, I will gain 235 XP. Dep like it depends what you're doing, but you could probably get, you know, for like say an hour ride, you're going to get 300 XP, something like that. If you're obliterating yourself, you know, you're like, I'm going to induce a heart attack today, you probably get 400 XP per hour, something like that. However, I'll also point out that for this ride, I gained 306 gold coins. You won't see that until the very end. It doesn't accumulate on the side like the, the green XP does. So this is definitely a hidden gem. Great climb. I'm going to look more at this race now and see what's going on. So I like these because, you know, if there's no one online, I can always pick some VPs, virtual partners again, uh, to keep me honest. You know, if there was no one here, maybe I wouldn't try to ride at three watts per kilo all the way. I might get lazy. Um, but I know Scooper's starting to breathe down my neck now. So, you know, here we are again. We've Maybe I said it about 45 seconds ago, a minute ago. Now we're just barely over 100 meters of separation. So I think Scooper's a pretty good climber. Maybe they're a lightweight. I don't really know. I didn't look at any details or any stats about them after the fact. I just did the ride, enjoyed it, you know, put a check mark beside another climb on my list that I wanted to do. Ooh, some nice little steep stuff here. See here, we're at 13% just quickly. And, you know, I know myself, I would love to see more map view. I'm going to try to keep doing that more and more. Like, I'd love to see the more of how big the switchbacks are here, what we're climbing up through. I just forgot to keep clicking back and forward on it, right? Uh... Look at this now. Scooper is really coming back on me hard now. So as I'm clunking along, just kind of grinding my way up in the 70 RPMs, I'm sure Scooper's flying along at 90 to 100 RPMs, quickly catching up with me. The rest I'm not concerned about. The rest I'm holding off. You know, we've got uh, 1.4 kilometers to go. 100 meters of climbing. So we still got a good chunk of climbing to do. We're still going to, it's probably going to average like 10% over the last kilometer, nine to 10% to make up those numbers. And here comes Scooper. Scooper's going to come flying by me. So again, you're not going to see the avatar go by, but look at the nearby you list on the left side. One meter behind me, zero, they're ahead of me now. So they've now moved ahead of me. Can't see them. So you got to be careful here. Um, if you were like really competitive and you really wanted to set a route record up here, this is where it's kind of hard to see what's going on because you really have to just look at that number 
because you have no one to follow at this point. You're just looking at a number slowly growing away from you. And it's just it's just hard to bring them back when it's just that number looking in your face. Okay, so a little map view here. I wanted to see what's going on. So you can see they're just around the bend for me. They're the green bubble, and you can see my name behind me. Uh, everyone else has fallen back by more than a kilometer behind us. So it's me and Scooper fighting out for first and second, but Scooper is definitely pulling away from me. You know, we're putting out... Uh, yeah, I'm putting out less power here. I'm only managing to get out into the, the high two-point... You know, high twos, maybe low threes, and it seems Scooper is just putting out a little bit more than me. Uh, probably a lot lighter climber. You know, we're leveling off a bit. Maybe I can pull them back here a little bit. Okay, yeah, I'm getting a bit of power down here. If I can get over three. Uh, and the whole time I'm doing this, I'm thinking I'm pulling them back. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting them. You know, but they're slowly getting away. So it's like, what's really cool is that it's fun to pick the virtual partners because you won't know how they're going to ride. It's a gamble. Even though you could say, well, all you got to do is just ride more power than they do and stay ahead of them, get a lead and stay ahead. Well, stuff happens, right? You get tired and all of a sudden they're just smashing watts uh, and they slowly start to pull away from you. We're less than, uh, you know, we're at 600 meters to go now and now he's got a 100 meter lead on me. So Sc Scooper here, I mean, look at Scooper now, look at the power. It seems like Scooper on their ride just smashed the last kilometer and a half. So that's another thing to consider too when you're picking your virtual partners. What were they doing when they set that time? It might have been a race event. You know, so like they were having a race where they were all sitting together. And then Scooper got involved in a huge battle against someone else and had to blast out all those watts. You know, these people that I picked, they may have raced months apart from each other. Uh, so I don't know where they came from, what they were doing. Were they doing a time trial up the hill? Were they just taking a leisurely ride? Were they involved in a huge race? Probably not because not many people have done this. But there's so many cool variables. It makes it a lot of fun. So Scooper bested me today. Finished ahead of me. Uh, not that far behind though. You know, coming to the finish here. Scooper's done now. I'm just finishing up. I've got 150 meters to go. This is a classic ride in California. If you're in San Francisco you and you're a cyclist, you know this ride. Remember on these non-ARs to really pedal hard at the end because they kind of slow up like it's going to do right here. And you never really know where the finish is, so I'm slamming it right there. Uh, fun ride. Check this one out. Uh, hidden gem status all the way. You can see the coins right in the middle there. I'm circling right now. 306 watts. I gave it a five-star rating. I loved it. I hope you can check it out. Catch you later.